story is the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, has urged police to use new powers to arrest and charge fuel campaigners who brought motorways to a standstill yesterday. This was a protest about uh, the record price of fuel. Well, campaigners are now warning that protests could continue for months, adding to the so-called summer of discontent. Well, let's get the views now of um, political commentator Albi Amancona uh, on all of this. Petrol protests, um, are they benefiting us? Are these people representing us? Are they just a pain in the butt? You see, this is the thing, Eamon, and as you were saying before, these protesters are protesting against the price of fuel. Now, what is a big constituent of the price of fuel taxation? I think it could be as high as 50% of the cost that we're paying for our fuel is tax taken by the government. So actually, if the government wanted to do something other than locking up protesters, protesting against the price of fuel, they could actually cut things like VAT, which is actually something which, surprise, surprise, the Labour Party is calling for. I would suggest that perhaps the best way a Conservative government can, help, can, can change the situation is not to lock up people that want to pay less tax, but perhaps implement some tax cuts. Although there will be people who say, you know, what Priti Patel is suggesting is a good idea, because you look at the pictures of the M4 in Somerset yesterday, and on one side of the motorway, people were playing football. I mean, it's impossible to go about your business if you're in that mm. part of town. People needing to go to hospital appointments, people needing to go to exams, whatever it might be. Hugely disruptive and terrible for the economy. Uh, precisely. And the police have been given a lot of powers to deal with these protesters. But just, just one wonders how sustainable this, this, these kinds of authoritarian actions are. Mm. I mean, where do they end? There are actually a lot of Conservatives who are quite uncomfortable with this policing bill yeah. that went through. Um, and I think the reason for these protests happening, it's very different to the eco protests. This is people protesting because they do not believe yes. the government is doing enough to solve the cost. So of the you think I'll be really um, the Home Secretary would be better served? Uh, inviting a few of them uh, into Downing Street and sitting down with a cup of tea and saying, look, here's our plans, we feel your pain, this is what we would like to do. Because I predict now there will be a VAT cut in, in fuel and it will happen when it suits the government to get them the best sort of headlines, some sort of autumn statement or whatever. But surely, I mean, the price where we are now, um, you know, what, what's it up to two quid yeah, now, isn't easily, it? Yeah, yeah? Uh, for fuel. Um, something has got to be done. What, why, as a government, would you be seen dragging, you know, dragging and, and, and kicking, fighting and kicking against all of this when you could actually be on the side of people? Uh, yes, I mean, it seems obvious that they could be on the side of people. But one of the things that we've also got to remember is everyone likes it when the government spends money. And fuel taxes bring in about £30 billion of revenue each year. And so if we're going to be cutting taxes, the other argument is, well, where are we going to get that money to spend on the public services that everyone wants yeah, the government to yeah. spend money on? So the government's in a tricky position on this. It's yeah. really interesting, the cost of living crisis calling everything into question. And I'm relating this now to Sir Keir Starmer yesterday making his speech, talking about his views on Brexit and if Labour came into power, they wouldn't go back on, on the direction of travel. But almost as soon as he'd finished that speech, the Mayor of London coming out saying, we're only just beginning to see the impact, impact of Brexit. And actually, he'd quite like to rejoin uh, the common market and the customs union. Um, what do you make of that? Yes, indeed. And Sela Carisi, I think the MP for Walthamstow, made some similar comments. Uh, look, I think ultimately, Keir Starmer had to come out and say what he said about Brexit. The question is whether or not he believes it. And there is this inner turmoil within the Labour Party where there are the traditional red wall seats, many of them highly Brexit voting, with the more liberal southern seats in London and the South East who were, who were very strongly remain. Um, and the balance seems to be tipping more now, perhaps in favour of the red wall. Um, and one has to ask that if that if this policy position is a successful one, what does that mean for the Conservative Party, which is struggling mm. in the Red Wall at the moment because of the, the Prime Minister's behaviour over the last year? And meanwhile, rumours continuing to swirl about whether or not Sakir Starmer will be leader for much longer. I mean, Durham police have said they won't give a running commentary into Beer Gate, but uh, we're led to believe that either a decision has been made and we haven't been told, or one is imminent. A uh, big upset if that does happen for the, for the Labour Party. Yes, because indeed the, the two people who are, well, the, the other person who's tipped as leader for the Labour Party, other than Keir Starmer, would be Angela Rayner, who's also implicated in this as well. So I do think it would shut the Labour Party into some sort of crisis, because I'm not sure who the other leadership, the runners and riders are, in the same way that we see well, in the Conservative Party. I mean, I tell you, two, two years ago, everybody was talking about Emily Thornberry. Um, is she not a, a runner and rider? the moment? 
I wouldn't say that Emily Thornberry was a runner and rinder because her position on Brexit and remaining in the European Union was actually even more extreme than Keir Starmer's. And just thinking about what he has said about, um, about Brexit needing to be a success and Labour being behind it and not going back into the single market or customs unit, I would, customs union rather, I would posit that if Emily Thornberry wasn't in the shadow cabinet, she'd have been one of those MPs coming out against that. Mm, well, yeah. She's on just before eight this morning, so we will ask her about that. Um, she's the Shadow Attorney General now, but I suppose other people in contention, if Sir Keir Starmer uh, were to resign this week, Lisa Nandy, Wes Streeting. Um, there's a few uh, front benches that perhaps might put their hat in the ring. Perhaps another one, of course, is the, the Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, but he's not got a seat in Westminster, which is which you need to become the leader of a political party because you need to lead it from the House of Commons. Look, Labour does have some talented people on its front benches, but the obvious successor would be Angela Rayner, and she is, uh, she is caught up in this mm -hmm. beer gate drama as well. Mm -hmm. OK, I'll be very good talking to you. Thank you very much indeed for that. And